வணக்கம் டு மோகன் ராம் பயாலஜி டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் நியூட்ரிஷன் த ஃபஸ்ட் யூனிட் இன் டென்த் பயாலஜி நியூட்ரிஷன் இஸ் தி மெத்தட் த்ரூ விச் ஆர்கானிசம்ஸ் procure their nutrients nutrients are the chemical substances which are responsible for giving energy and growth and for their survival nutrition is of different modes so first photosynthesis the experiment which you are observing now is priestly experiment to prove the gas which is releasing through plants is responsible for survival of animals and for burning of the candle so later lavoisier is followed by him named the gas as oxygen so this is the first step for photosynthesis later the van neel is the scientist who did research on sulfur bacteria and stated a statement given an equation 6CO2 plus 12H2O in presence of light and chlorophyll gives glucose water and life gas called oxygen so let us see the process of photosynthesis in detail for the photosynthesis carbon dioxide water and sunlight chlorophyll are the requirements oxygen released as a by product glucose is the main product of the process in the sunlight there are many waves many waves in electromagnetic spectrum uv light visible light x rays gamma rays infrared rays among them in between 400 to 700 nanometers there is visible light in that seven colors are present called vibgr violet indigo blue green yellow orange red among these seven colors for the process of photosynthesis green and yellow colors are not useful they are reflected by the pigments present in the leaves other than these colors are absorbed by the plant majorly red and blue colors are helpful for the process of photosynthesis light enter into the plant cell and it falls on the chloroplast chloroplast are the green plastids which are only found in plant cells chloroplast is covered by a two layered membrane and the colorless part of chloroplast is called as stroma and inner inner side of the chloroplast there is the thylakoid membrane So the stalks of thylakoid membranes are called grana their only light dependent reactions are takes place this is the thylakoid membrane where photosystems are present those are called as light harvesting centers in which 300 to 400 chlorophyll molecules are found they are together arranged such centers are called as light harvesting centers in which the solar energy is converted into the chemical energy so here you are observing that light molecules are exciting the chlorophyll molecule light energy helps in the exciting the chlorophyll molecules and chlorophyll gets oxidized and electrons are removed those electrons are accepted by the electron acceptors 
and again the chlorophyll molecule has to get their electrons to come back to their normal position for that these oxidized chlorophyll molecules in presence of sunlight splits the water molecule called as photolysis of water through which electrons and protons are released oxygen gas evolved and escape trostomata into the atmosphere those electrons are taken by the chloroplast and those electrons released by the chlorophyll molecule and protons released by the water molecule both together taken by the electron acceptors here with the help of the enzyme atp synthase by utilizing adp atp molecule is produced in light reactions the driving force of movement of the protons helps in the production of atp as well as the electrons and protons are accepted by nadp to form NADPH, nicotinamide adenine, dinucleotide phosphate, hydrogen is produced. ATP is the energy currency of the cell. Adenosine triphosphate is the full form of ATP, which is equal to 7200 calories of energy. So, this ATP and NAP molecules. NADPH are the products of light reactions and oxygen is also liberated in the light reactions. Then this ATP and NADPH are enter and helps in the carbon fixation. Then these are called as light independent reactions or carbon fixation reactions or Calvin cycle. So here, Kelvin was the scientist who discovered this cyclic process. So actually, the carbon dioxide is taken up by a 5-carbon compound called RUBP and it forms a first stable compound called as PGA, phosphoglyceric acid. There are three steps in this cycle. First one is carbon fixation. Second one is reduction by using ATP and NADPH this phosphoglyceric acid molecule is reduced as a glycerol H3 phosphate and those are help in formation of glucose and third one is regeneration of RUBP so hence this cycle continues and for formation of one glucose molecule this cycle has to be performed twice then one glucose molecule is produced and the product is glucose and many glucose molecules together form a polymer is called as starch many glucose molecules together forms a long chain called starch is the polymer this process is called as polymerization so this is the process of photosynthesis the very important life process for all living organisms gives oxygen and food by utilizing carbon dioxide and water with the help of chlorophyll and sunlight So here the plants, the green leaves or green parts of the plants are called as food factories where food of the plant is produced in the leaves particularly. The leaf cells or the mesophyll cells are possessing chloroplasts inside the chloroplast, chlorophyll is present. When we observe the leaf anatomy we can clearly observe the upper epidermis and lower epidermis where more number of stomata are present 
in between these two epidermal layers there is a mesophyll tissue in that polysaccharide parenchyma and spongy parenchyma are present and vascular bundle is in the middle part which possess xylem and phloem helps in conduction for the plants in mesophyll tissue there are chloroplasts with the help of electron microscope we can observe the chloroplasts covered by two layered membrane a ground substance colorless substance is called as stroma and inner membrane is called as thylakoid membrane stalks of thylakoid membranes are called as grana is the site for the light reactions so here a stomata or found in epidermal cells of the epidermis of the leaf these stomata are the responsible for exchange of the gases and send out excess water present in the plants called as transpiration so stomata is the structure it's the opening covered by the two guard cells the guard cells are uh, possessing many chloroplasts they are also for form photosynthesis so during the sunlight many plants open their stomata so whenever water is enter into the cells then stomata opens and we are observing now is an experiment to prove that oxygen liberates during photosynthesis is namely hydrilla funnel experiment in this hydrilla or elodea plants can be used oxygen can be observed as bubbles that can be proved with the burning match stick so here only we have to use water plants and second one is half leaf experiment and this is the experiment to prove carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis half leaf is put in the bottle where koh is present koh helps in absorption of carbon dioxide and before the experiment plant should be kept in dark for destarching for the both experiments for the light is essential and for carbon dioxide is essential so this is the common process at the end of these two experiments we have to perform starch test with the help of iodine so whenever starch is present this iodine gives dark bluish black color so for the testing of the carbohydrates or starch in the leaf to prove that starch is present in the leaf this is the experiment with methylated spirit leaf should be boiled in methylated spirit and then chlorophyll dissolves in the spirit leaf turns into the colorless at the time when we add the iodine leaf turns into the bluish black if carbohydrates are present if starch is present so here the plant cells produced carbohydrates with the help of sunlight that carbohydrates gives us atp or energy by the process of respiration so hence photosynthesis is the most important life process for all living organisms <clears throat> so this is the process where plants are getting energy from the sunlight and by using that they are performing photosynthesis to give carbohydrates and oxygen to other organisms other organisms utilize this oxygen and food for producing energy in the process of respiration so this is the atp molecule structure adenosine part and three phosphate molecules together called atp and whenever it is hydrolyzed it 
terminal phosphate bond is break down to release 7200 calories of energy so if it happens in presence of light it is called as photo phosphorylation which occurs in chloroplast so this is the overall process of photosynthesis light reactions performed in thylakoid membrane and ATP and NADPH are produced these are utilized in dark reaction and with the help of carbon dioxide it produces carbohydrates ATP and NADPH acts like a bridge between these two process in dark reactions or light independent reactions there are three steps as we discussed earlier carbon fixation is the first step and glycerol head 3 phosphate production or reduction is the second step third one is regeneration of RUBP this is the cyclic process ATP and NADPH are utilized in this process here we can clearly observe that leaves then water is also an important for the photosynthesis how water is entered into the leaves roots absorb the water and conducted by the xylem into the leaves through veins and the food which is produced in the leaves is transported by the phloem to the all parts of the plants so stomata and xylem uh, helps in the transportation here and here we are observing that daughter plant or cascuta is a partial parasite here which is hosting on tomato so with the help of hastoria it penetrates into the host plant and absorbs the water and uh, let us go for the heterotrophic nutrition so here amoeba with the help of pseudopodia it is taking its food and there is no digestive system it digests with the help of food vacuole and undigested food material or waste material is eliminated by the process of diffusion so it is a unicellular organism like amoeba and paramecium so the process is simple without digestive system so this is called heterotrophic nutrition so holozoic nutrition is the process in which organisms take the food without digesting outside the body they digest the food inside their body that is called as holozoic nutrition including human being we perform holozoic nutrition so here we are going with the human digestive system it is a long gut or digestive tract it is a pipe like structure with 8 meters length start with oral mouth and buccal cavity pharynx esophagus stomach duodenum small intestine and large intestine so mouth is the opening the first opening and the last opening is anus so they are guarded by the apparatus the mouth is guarded by the lips and anus is guarded by the anal sphincter so when we open the mouth we can observe the buccal cavity where teeth tongue and salivary glands are present there are four type of teeth in permanent type incisors canines premolars and molars icpm is the code to remember 2 by 2 1 by 1 2 by 2 3 by 3 is the human adult dental formula whereas in the case of milk teeth only 20 are present and this is the buccal cavity which is separated 
oral cavity and nasal cavity by the palate a bony plate like structure and tongue helps in the achieving the food properly and for the tasting and salivary glands three pairs of salivary glands are present in our buccal cavity here we clearly we can observe that epiglottis how it prevents the entry of food into the windpipe so food should enter into the esophagus so epiglottis is a part which acts like a lid on the glottis so here it closes and food enters into the esophagus so in buccal cavity with the help of teeth chewing of the food is called mastication mouth is a mastigating unit food is break down into the smaller part and mixed with saliva uh, saliva is having an enzyme called ptyalin it helps in the carbohydrate digestion then when we swallow the food it enters into the stomach through esophagus by the peristaltic movements the stomach is a j shaped muscular bag like structure where food is stored for 2 to 3 hours and food is churned by the muscular activity and digested by the gastric juice secreted by the stomach in gastric juice hcl the concentrated hydrochloric acid and pepsin lipase in children renin or the enzymes present hcl helps in killing the microorganisms and facilitating the easy digestion of the food like proteins after it slowly the partially digested food from the stomach which is called as chyme enter into the small intestine the anterior part of small intestine is called as duodenum where the bile juice from the liver and pancreatic juice from the pancreas are mixed and then food enters into the intestine and in intestine small intestine intestinal juice is released food gets digested and digested food is absorbed by the villi the inner membrane foldings of inner side foldings of small intestine are called as microvilli which is supplied by the blood vessels let us see the detailed process so masticating in the mouth and saliva gets mixed the ptyalin digests the carbohydrates into maltose and food becomes bolus and it is swallowed so slowly it enters into the esophagus no digestion takes place in esophagus with the help of mucus lining food slowly passes through the esophagus by the smooth muscle muscular activity it is completely involuntary process after swallowing the food by the peristaltic movement it slowly enters into the stomach sometimes it gets reverse peristalsis and it results the vomiting of the food from stomach to the out of the body then when it enters into the stomach it stays some time and mixed with gastric juice and break down by the actions muscular activity of the stomach and by the gastric juice and hcl proteins gets digested by the help of pepsin into the peptidases and renin in the children's curdling of the milk and slowly it enters into the duodenum where bile juice and pancreatic juice are mixed bile juice do not possess any enzymes it helps in the emulsification of fats 
and pancreatic juice consists of trypsin chymotrypsin are the proteolytic enzymes lipase is fat digesting enzyme and amylase digests the carbohydrates then enters into the small intestine the juice secreted by small intestine is called succus enterocus it possesses sucrase maltase and lipase nucleotidases nucleosidases peptidases like many enzymes helps in the digestion of the food then digested food is absorbed by the small intestine and undigested food enter into the colon